Bard's Tale, FCI 1991. Now the cover of the game just says Bard's Tale, but the title screen itself says The Bard's Tale, Tales of the Unknown. So you can decide whichever one you think is right, I don't really care. So the startup of this game is kind of like Hills Far or Bandit Kings, where we have to build our characters first. It's a pretty typical RPG element. The thing that seems strange though is you can't do anything else until you make characters and build a party. It just seems this game should have just started you off right at the character creation screen to begin with. Instead of having you fumble around with all these options until you figure it out anyway. From our first set of options, we go to Party. From there, we go to Create. From there, we go to Create again. Then we choose the occupation of our characters. These could be called classes in other RPG games. So we create the three stooges here, and we still can't leave the guild yet. Because we have to actually add those characters we created to our party. Then we can finally leave the guild. That whole process really could have been streamlined with just starting to play at the character creation screen. There was no sense in making us navigate all those menus. So finally we get to something different, and now it's a first person maze game, kind of like Pool of Radiance. As I mentioned before, these first person games don't typically do too well in the NES. But the huge advantage this game has is it gives us an overhead map. That is incredibly helpful. In fact, you could just use that map on its own to get around. But if the game was just that screen, it wouldn't be very interesting to look at. So let's check out a few places. Here's Garth's equipment shop. Where we can do common buying and selling of items. Another pretty typical RPG type of shop. Here's the review council. Whatever the hell that means. Here's just an empty room. And now we're into combat. The battle system in this game kind of runs like Dragon Warrior, where you don't see your own characters, you just see the enemies you're fighting. So you choose your actions, you build a strategy to stay alive and defeat your enemies. But I just got laughed at, so I guess I wasn't quite prepared. But again, like a lot of the RPG games we looked at before, you put a lot of time and effort into it. You build your characters up to take on random encounters, you buy new weapons, you sell old weapons, you refine your character's skills and abilities, and progress through the game in that fashion. And while the beginning of the game is unnecessarily convoluted, the in-game mechanics work pretty well with the map, as well as a familiar battle system. So I'll give it a 5 out of 10.